Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lily from lilyarder.com and this is where I like to share all of my DIYs. Okay, so for this video, I'm gonna be sharing two things. The first thing I'm gonna share with you is our DIY wall and the second thing is DIY barn doors. So before we jump in, I wanna show you a quick little sneak peek of our living room before this all started. So here's how it looked, and I gotta be honest with you, I tried real hard to make this space look cohesive, but I feel like it just didn't matter what I added in there, it just looked like a long hallway at the end of the day. So I finally convinced my husband to make a wall with me. So I'll be sharing our DIY wall, and then I will show you how we did our barn doors on a budget because it was way cheaper to make them than it was to buy them brand new. Um, okay, let's get started. Okay, to start building our wall, we first marked where we wanted the wall to be, and then we used a square and a permanent marker to make sure we marked it square. We then used a chalk line to extend our markings across the floor. Next, I marked where we wanted our door opening, and we started attaching the two by fours to the floor. Okay, so this was actually a bit tricky. Because our floor underneath was a concrete slab, we had the hardest time nailing in the two by fours. The nail gun didn't do the trick at all. The nails just kept bending. So our neighbor gave us some of these special concrete nails and we pre-drilled holes before nailing them in. This worked on a few of them, but it was still a struggle to get the nails in without bending them. So Tony actually came up with an idea and it worked. He pre-drilled a hole big enough to fit in three nails at a time and nailed it in that way and it actually worked. We then continued to add two by fours onto both sides of the wall and across the length of the ceiling. Once those were up, we added the studs to our door opening and after that, we pretty much filled the rest of the wall with studs trying to keep them 16 inches apart. I'm not gonna lie, we added a few extra studs here and there. Here's what the framing looked like before we started adding the sheetrock. Okay, next we added our sheetrock. Tony used his handy utility knife to make the cuts. This part of the project was actually probably the easiest. We ended up just attaching all the sheetrock with some screws. Next, we were ready to apply the joint compound. To finish off the edges, I got these metal corners at Home Depot and cut them down to size before attaching them to the door openings with screws. For the joint compound, I ended up picking this dust control joint compound. Honestly, I'm not sure if this was helpful in regards to keeping the dust down, but it works great on the walls and it's actually really easy to sand. Okay, so I'm not completely sure if I did this correctly, but this is what I learned after watching a few videos. I first applied a layer of joint compound onto the wall where the seams were, and then I applied joint paper tape over it. I then used a taping knife and swiped over it to embed the tape into the compound. I did this to all the seams and let it dry for 24 hours. I also taped off my wall at this point from the rest of the living room. This definitely helped keep the dust at bay when I was sanding it. Once the first layer was dry, I applied another thick layer over the dry tape. Be sure to add enough joint compound. It's actually easier later on when you're sanding it. Let your second layer dry for an additional 24 hours. Oh my gosh, this was by far the worst part of the project. There was so much waiting time. Okay, once the second layer was dry, it was ready to be sanded. We had to give it a third coat in some areas after sanding because the tape kept coming through um, because I think I originally just didn't put enough joint compound onto there. Okay, next I used PVA primer. This is specifically made for drywall and I applied paint over it once it was dry. And that's it. This wall took us about two and a half weeks to do and it cost us uh, around under $300 for all the supplies. Here's how the wall looks all complete. A huge thank you to my hubby for making this happen. It's been a dream of mine to have this wall up for so long and I couldn't have done it without him. Okay, so for the doors, we purchased prime pine wood. To start building them, we first cut out both tops, bottoms, and sides for each door. If you want to know the dimensions, get the plans, or for the full list of supplies, I'll add a link down below to the blog post. Next, to secure all the pieces together, we made angled holes on the back of the pieces with our Craig jig. 
We then lay each door out onto Tony's handy frame machine and we were ready to secure them. In case you're wondering, here's how the holes looked. Tony added these tiny clamps to one side and I gotta be honest, this helped a ton. We applied a decent amount of wood glue to the seams and secured each piece with screws. We then moved on to the next side and did the same. We didn't remove the clamps until all four pieces were secured together. Okay, next we attached wood pieces to the middle of each door, making sure they were even lengths apart. We also used the Craig jig method with um, the holes on the back and secured them with wood glue and screws. Yay, almost done. Okay, so for the backing, we actually ended up going with some of this birch plywood. It was the closest we could find to match the pine that we picked. Tony marked and cut it down to size and I stained it with this fruit wood stain. I also stained the door panels at this point and to finish the doors, we attached the plywood to the doors with some small nails on the back and that's it. I am so in love with how these doors came out. Honestly, I was super scared to DIY them. In fact, I had the wood standing in my living room for about three weeks before I finally built up the nerve to go for it. And Tony definitely played a huge role in getting them done. I love everything about them, the stain, the wood grain, and I'm really surprised with how this plywood looks against the pine. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I try and post weekly, but I noticed that has not been happening lately, so I apologize for that. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.